two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine times two is eighteen. Two, four, six, eight, eighteen. Ooh, I've missed you guys. We're about to spend some serious quality time together. These outlet pairs are what we'll be using in the wall outlets on the east and the west side of the garage. It's much easier to wire them in pairs and then um, all you have to do is bring in the line side or the power source from the, from the panel and then wire in the load side which effectively creates a daisy chain. But this stuff, if you can see, is just tedious, busy work. I've been gonna do this for a couple of days now, and I realize if I don't just sit down and do it, I'm probably gonna just keep working on kind of developing the system as a whole, which I wanna do some of today. But I wanna get these set up because our electrician's coming very soon, and I wanna make sure this stuff is really laid out well so that we have a very efficient uh, visit with them. So a couple of things that are really interesting about wiring these outlets. Um, I believe this is electrical code, national electrical code here in the United States. And of course, each state and municipality, they call them an authority having jurisdiction, an AH. J <laughs> uh, adopts different portions, or not different portions, but different, different versions of the code. Anyway, so as it pertains to these outlets, you'll notice that there's actually two ground wires, one for each outlet, and something really unique. This is one of those little details in the code that's important. Each contact, which this terminal here, or this contact, is only permitted to have one wire attached to it. So that doesn't mean that you couldn't hook multiple wires coming out of this, but only that you could only have one hooked to this uh, terminal. So as it pertains to the grounds, they all get married together, but we can't daisy chain from this ground to this ground because this ground would then need to connect back to the, um, the main grounding. So we instead run a pigtail out, and that allows us to wire nut all of these together. I guess you could hook the ground from your load side into here, and then, well, see, you can't do that because then you can't daisy chain across. So the point is, for these grounds, we can only have one wire per terminal. So we bring these pigtails off, and then we'll have the line side coming from the panel and the load side coming from the previous outlet and there we'll wire nut everything together. I can't say this for certain because it's very subjective, it's a matter of opinion, but I have a hunch that what has helped us to build good rapport with the inspectors uh, so far is A, that we've hired a professional to come in and consult with us and kind of go through some of these little nuances in the, the code. And it's not just electrical, that includes plumbing, uh, et cetera. And also that we've paid attention to those little details. And there are, they are tedious, I get that. But there's, there's a foundation for it. There's a reason or a justification for some of these things. I don't think it's just bureaucracy. But I feel like paying attention to these little details when an inspector comes, uh, we take the attitude that we're trying to build our house right or build it well and we don't see the inspector as somebody who is the popo or the police. Rather, there's someone who's familiar with the code and how to apply it effectively in different scenarios, aka our house. So 
when we when an inspector comes and sees that you're paying attention to these little details, they they have a very um, very respectful attitude towards you, and they see that you're not trying to comply, but rather that you're you're paying attention to the details and you're you're showing a level of concern that begets professionals and they treat you like one. So uh, I guess we want to share that because I think there's also this kind of cowboy wild west attitude that exists out there in, in owner builder construction and we get it. We get it. Uh, we don't like somebody looking over our shoulder either and I think that's more a perception although some inspectors obviously make that a reality and that's just a shame on them. Um, instead of being an asset they become more of a, a trouble or a nuisance and that's just that's just a problem with people not a problem with the code. So we thought we'd pass that on and feel like if you're building your own home, uh, if you can, find someone who knows the code and have them give you uh, oversight. And then pay attention to those little details and hopefully that'll help you guys uh, have a much better experience with building inspectors, electrical, plumbing, etc. One down, eight to go. Feels good to have the busy work all done. <laughs> well, for now. Uh, you know what's funny is I feel like simple things like that is something that a homeowner could do, you know? And I bet most of you electricians out there just hate tedious work like that. I mean, you're smarter than that, right? I mean, just put the black wire with the silver wire, with the white wire, with the ground wire, all that stuff. On to today. <laughs> this is day three of the garage electrical project. Uh, if you haven't seen the first two, jump back. There's a lot of kind of detail in the planning and kind of talking about the outlet boxes, why we're using certain depths and how they work. And uh, the last video, we actually did some of the box layout for the ceiling, for the lighting and the garage door openers. And today, um, I'm kind of under the gun to get ready for the electrician to come through and just kind of talk about strategy and make sure that he doesn't see any issues with the way that we're proceeding with this stuff. There are some really technical questions that I have um, and I, I want to make sure that kind of we can spend most of our time talking about those details instead of kind of worrying about some of this more uh, mundane stuff. One thing I want to go over really quick, I sat and studied some of the three-way wiring diagrams that I have. We talk about those in the previous video and and I realized that I was massively overcomplicating the lighting circuits here in the garage. And it's going to, changing it is going to reduce the amount of wire pulling and just the pure complexity of the system. On the left here is my old uh, ceiling lighting plan. Well, it's electrical in general, but anyway. Um, this lighting circuit here is a three-way circuit. This bank of lights will be on one switch and this bank of lights will be on a different switch. And I'm not sure why, but I had it in my mind that I had to bring power up here for the lighting circuit. And then I would feed this bank of lights, this bank of lights, and then I would leave a box here and here for future lighting if we wanted to add cabinetry and stuff. But the problem is the stairs over here also need a home run or they need some sort of power source to power the stair lighting. So I'm gonna end up having to run a home run over here into this box. But when I do that, it complicates this box. If you watched the last video, you know that this box, we had to put a double gang in here and a double gang in here because there's just a ridiculous amount of wire that's coming and going from these boxes, from the switch to the switch to the light to the light, etc. So that's garbage. This is the new and improved simple plan. With one lighting home run back to the panel, I can power the stairs and these two garage banks. And then we could do another home run over here down the road if we wanted to, to bring uh, a temporary box into these two walls for future lighting. But you'll see that with one home run here, we can now run a lead from this switch over here to the door, which allows us to have a three-way switch. 
and then a single run of lighting down the middle of each side of the garage. It's much cleaner and much more simple. And then this home run over here is kind of its own branch. It just feeds these two boxes and whatever we decide to put on the walls later. I think for me, when it comes to setting up circuits, there's not, I mean, there's, there probably is a right way, but it's very subjective. It really has to be kind of related to all the other circuits, um, holistically, if you will. And it's not so much, how does this circuit work in isolation? I feel pretty confident about this, so confident that we're gonna move ahead with drilling holes in the eye joist. The way I've laid this out, we only need a single hole from north to south in each joist. That will allow us three wires in a one inch hole. And I do have a text message into the inspector to find out if there's something in the National Electrical Code that limits the number of conductors in a particular hole, because I can't find anything. I'm not sure if that's just kind of like a good old boy rule, or if there's actually some basis for it. I know there is when it comes to studs, and that's a whole different topic. These are not studs, so that's not really relevant. So today, I wanna to try to get some wire pulled, get some outlets put in these boxes, and basically, minus bringing the power over to the switch box, which by the way, is gonna go in a wall that we haven't built yet. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyway, get all this stuff set up so that when there's a switch and when there's a home run and power, we can simply flip the switch and the lights will come on. One other tiny detail about changing the way this, these lighting circuits are set up is it's gonna change the cost by a long shot. Um, I don't have it in front of me, but basically we're gonna be using a circuit similar to this one. So we're gonna bring the power to the first switch and then all we have to do is connect the switch to the other switch with a three wire and a ground. And then from that switch, we can just run a regular uh, two wire. And then from that switch, we can run a regular two wire or two conductor wire to the lights. And this is basically how you would wire a normal light if you only had a single pole switch. Instead of having to run three wire to each consecutive light in the chain, uh, and that's just how that would have to be wired. Sorry if that's kind of fuzzy. My point is, this is gonna be way more efficient. Here's a better diagram. This will make it really easy for people to understand. This is how we're going to wire our switch. So we're gonna bring power in, and then we're gonna connect this switch and this switch with a three wire. That's it, one three wire. And then from here, we can run regular old Romex. Versus up here, this would hap what would happen if we tried to do it the way I had designed it before. We'd have to run three wire, two wire, two wire, and three wire. And that involves a lot more wire, which just drives the cost of this circuit up. I don't think we have to say this again, but I'll just say it one more time. I'm not an electrician. I'm not giving anybody advice. We're just sharing what we're doing. And um, we don't always explain it the best, but I think if you do the research and you spend your time uh, studying people who do know what they're doing and the diagrams, especially on the internet, it becomes more clear. So if I've left you confused, do some research. It'll all make sense. So yesterday I swapped these double gang boxes in because this was a single gang, remember? And now those boxes need to go away. And I guess that's one more reason this circuit's gonna cost less because we just need less materials.
So we have one row of holes from north to south. And if everything goes good, we're only ever going to have three wires, three Romexes per hole. Um, there's one small nuance. We're going to be running some 12-3, which the three refers to the number of conductors in the wire. I know it's confusing. There's actually four wires in that cable, but only three of them can conduct. Uh, the, the ground is not counted in that <laughs> for some reason. Anyway, so you might ask yourself, if you're only allowed to have six conductors in a one-inch hole, how can you have two 12-3s and a 12-2? Because wouldn't that be eight conductors? The answer is that on a three-way switch, at any given time, only two of the three in the 12-3 is actually acting as a conductor. Therefore, you can technically have more conductors in the hole than you're allowed so long as they're not all being used. I guess if that makes sense. You're only allowed to have six conductors in use. Guys, can you understand why homeowners get frustrated with this stuff? Because the code makes sense until it doesn't. The wires have a certain name. I think the reality is that every industry has their own vernacular. And if you can learn that vernacular, you can kind of learn the, the thinking behind it all. It's a lot easier than maybe trying to learn all the little nuanceical letters of the code. So what I think we'll do is we'll pull wire uh, into these little boxes, these single gang boxes, because those are actually just gonna be an outlet. Even though they're gonna control a light, these lights actually have a regular plug to them. And that won't close the doors on future lighting options. So if we wanna either replace the lights or change to a different style or whatever, as long as it's got a cord, uh, we can plug into it. Or we could tap into those boxes and just pull the outlet out in the future. We could put something else there if we wanted to. So let's get those connected. And then we should be able to pull the 12-3 uh, wire all the way through from the front of the garage to the back. And then we'll have to just leave it for now. And uh, when we get to the switch and we figure all that stuff out, we can set it up. Whenever I get done with a wire run and we have extra, which you should always, almost always have extra, um, I tend to just keep it and we tend to grab it when we need something that's on, a sh on the shorter side. Either you're trying to connect maybe a switch to an outlet or vice versa. I'm just looking to see if I have anything long enough to do what I want to do with these. And the answer is no. Really quick, I want to answer a question that someone out there probably has. This wire is 14-3, 14, 14 referring to the gauge of the wire. This wire is not permitted on a circuit that is protected with a 20 amp breaker because the wire is not suited for that. So on a 15 amp breaker, we can use number 14 wire. And we can't step down the wire size. So let's say that we went to an outlet with 20 amps, but we had a teeny tiny little light, a little bitty one amp, carries no current, hardly light. We can't draw current from that circuit with this wire. So even though we have this uh, in the ceiling fan circuit in the loft, um, there's really not a lot of use in, for it in the house because most of our circuits are going to be 20 amp. So hopefully we'll find a use for some of this stuff Otherwise, we only used a little bit of it and we bought a huge roll of it. If you've seen the video where we failed our first electrical inspection, that's one of those little details that we didn't get right. Uh, in our bathroom circuit, we actually have a fan and a light. That little light and that little fan are on a 12-3 a a wire. They were on a 14-3 wire because they're tiny. They're just tiny. They don't draw hardly any current, but they're wired into the bathroom circuit and code requires the bathroom to be on a 20 amp breaker. And therefore everything in the bathroom, regardless of its size or current draw must be number 12 wire details.
basically all we need to do is just have a couple more boxes to connect and then we're done with that part. Well, that's one side down, and I'd really like to get this side complete uh, this evening before I call it a night. Um, this side's a little bit different though because we don't have any switch wires that we're pulling through here, but we are gonna have home runs for power, and that's how we're gonna end up using up all the three holes. So I'm gonna work on this for a little while, and we'll see how far we can get. dinner yeah oh my goodness these are all of our root vegetables from from the garden they're all from the garden beets, beets. radishes and our first carrot nice and our nasturtiums because they're pretty duh duh um and then i cut carrot tops up and sprinkled them on top like parsley oh. and then here's homemade apricot preserves from 2016 Ooh. So the only thing that we didn't touch on here is the beef, but it is local. It is local. So but that's that's a dang good meal right there. Mm. And wow, let's top it off with some sprouts, huh? Oh yeah, that looks delicious. Right? Are you gonna eat with me? Heck yeah! Wow, that dinner was amazing. So excited that we're starting to get things out of the garden. We were worried. We were worried <laughs> for a lot of reasons. Uh, I think Alyssa's going to share a lot of that in a future video, but it's great to be eating fresh out of the garden. We're trying some new strategies this year and it's totally working. Love it. Um, so how far do we get? We got the, the holes drilled. I think we just need to pull wire now. Well, that's about as far as I can go tonight. Um, it's tempting to run some home runs, but two things. One, what if something has to change and I cut the wire and now I've just wasted a bunch of wire? 
And two, what if there's a flaw in my plan that I just haven't seen yet? So I think I probably better take some time this evening and just really go through all of my, my detailed notes and stuff and make sure I'm ready for the electrician's visit. That way I don't miss anything. I, I feel like even though we're paying for their time, it's still good to be respectful of their time because we're not the only customer, obviously. Although I did find out when I ran the wire from this garage door opener to the other one, a flaw in my plan. So when I redrew my garage electrical, I forgot to draw in the garage door openers. So this home run of the lighting circuit will actually go to the garage door opener, to the garage door opener, and then to this box. That way this is on the lighting circuit, but it's all a home run. That way it's not on any of this switched stuff in here. So I've just run the wire from the two garage door openers to each other, and I obviously haven't mounted these boxes yet. Just in case there's a reason, I probably shouldn't be doing that. I can't see why, but better to be patient and do it right the first time. Well, my battery's about to die on the camera. Dinner's done. I'm hot and tired. Everybody else is already in bed, so I think I better wrap up, clean up, and get ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow.